Everybody, if you're in Proverbs 24 and 16, say amen. amen. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. Though the just man fall, not into willful sin, but calamities, struggles, problems, uh, the point of this verse is that it's teaching is not the, the liability of good men to err, but God's providence, his care, his concern over us. You're going to have struggles. You're going to, you're going to fall. When, when I read this, I think of a Job. I think of the prodigal's father. I think of people that have, gone through stuff, who, who, who suffer sickness or illness or tragedy or, oh man, every time you turn around, something bad happens. But God is still the ever-present help in time of trouble. Amen. 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 Do you have that video ready? Amen. Hey, well, getting it ain't ready, so let me, get, I'm going to go to another verse here. Man. Just remember this time at the end of the message. I'm not going long. He's just late getting started. <laughs> just watch. You know, accidents happen. Falls can be unexpected. We don't always plan for everything that happens to us. So let's all stand. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Jesus, we are thankful for your love, your grace, and your mercy. And Lord, your word declares that even a just person can fall. And fall seven times. But your word does declare that he can rise up again. That they can rise up again. Lord, I need your help tonight. There's some people going through some stuff. Whoever's going to hear this online in the future on the internet. God, I pray right now for each and every one tonight, today, and in the future. That they can realize that you may fall, but you can rise up again. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 God bless you. You can be seated. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. I am thankful and can testify tonight Jesus works. Amen. Jesus works. I am not uh, able to tell you that I have had a smooth pathway, or uh, I've been able to live uh, over 50 years without trouble or problems. I can't say that. That doesn't mean that God hasn't always been there. He has always been there, and he's always been that help in trouble. The difference between the wise and the wicked is most obvious in future tense. When Jesus spoke of those people that honestly listen, that hear, that will take his word and his teachings, his commands and his admonishments to heart. When, when he makes statements about being separate from the world, he means it. When the Bible talks about watch what comes out of your mouth, watch 
what you set before your eyes when women need to dress like ladies and men need to dress like men. It, it's not just when you're at church or when you feel like it. It's a walk with God commitment. And he is that ever-present help to those that are his. He, he, makes a, he makes a statement in Luke 6, 47. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. Future tense. And he goes into the story of the two builders. One builds on the sand and one builds on the rock. They both build. They're both working and both houses last. Let me explain something to you. You can get away and you can assert teaching from the Bible. This country's existed a long time. It was founded on the word of God. In fact, the very first building built to be a church on this terra firma, way back east, still has the words Acts 2.38 written on the wall. Now, I'm going to be clear here. I'm going to be very loving. There's some of you. I love you. But you're skirting, oh, that's a pun intended, the issue on the honesty of living for God. You got to get this in your heart. Because storms are coming. It may not always make sense why I put money into a spare tire. Why I have life insurance. Why that you have food in the cupboard. Stuff happens. You have to understand there's a day coming when whether you truly live for God or not will be revealed. We're all building. We all got houses, fucking spiritually now. But we're all fixing to find out who's been really building and who's been playing. Okay? Trials come. Truth will be revealed. First Corinthians, Paul tells us, every, every person's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. The NIV says that their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. The players... And the real ones will be revealed. Yes. Nobody backslides, slips up, or has something inappropriate in their life for a long period of time by mistake. It's by choice. Yes. God has given us his spirit yes. to be overcomers. And if you are still struggling with the same issue week after week, day after day, you have not submitted yourself to the power and the authority of Jesus Christ. And when the storm comes, you'll be washed away. What do these people have in common? James Dyson, Jerry Seinfeld, Theodore Seuss, Giselle, Elvis Presley, Michael Jordan. They were all said to have failed. James Dyson failed 5,126 times in his invention of the Dyson bagless vacuum. Jerry Seinfeld was booed off the stage early in his comedic career. Theodore Seuss Giselle had his first book rejected 27 times before Dr. Seuss became published. Elvis was told he had no ability to get back on his truck and leave. Michael Jordan was cut from his high school basketball team. Time reveals the truth. Did you know Abraham Lincoln went into the army as a captain but returned as a private? And he lost more elections than he's won. Yet today he's regarded as one of the greatest presidents we've ever had. Time reveals you're, you're not pulling the wool over somebody's eyes with secret sins and not really living up to the word of God. Because if this is a book of suggestions, you're not a follower. I showed you a video and that up, up 10 years ago, that video just went viral because so many people saw it and how out of nowhere it came. 
America has developed an appetite for fail videos. In fact, I've caught myself a few times watching the fail compilations that are on YouTube. You know, this, this, this woman caught on a security camera cleaning a table after a restaurant closed. Is, nobody would have expected that to happen. In fact, your expression was very clear that you didn't expect it by the gasp. But in a moment, hard-working lady, doing everything she knew to do, ended up in a situation that was pretty scary. Unlike the waitresses without warning, epic fall, we're given a warning. We're, we're, we're given some pretty clear warnings in the word of God. In fact, in fact, you know what? To, to pick on, let's pick on Peter. Jesus gave him a very, very clear warning. That is a premise, as a backdrop. The apostle Peter, on the, on the night he betrayed Jesus, Jesus told him that they would all stumble, that they would all scatter when he was taken away. What did Peter do when Jesus said it? Oh, not me. I'm that one brother you can count on. Not me. I, I live it at home like I live it here. I, I'm not sneaking off behind back to pop open my cigarettes or to pop back a frosty one. I, I, I'm the real deal at home and here. I'm not that girl or that guy doing this or that. No. Peter took offense to the very idea and told Jesus that while he could see others failing, I ain't never failing Jesus. Jesus corrected and told him that he would deny. You know, see, he got specific. He, he probably wished, man, I just would have to shut up because he called my sin out. He said, you're going to deny me three times. Look, don't get me wrong. I believe Peter thought, I'm going to prove him wrong. See, some of us, we live like we're going to prove Jesus wrong. Like, I'm not susceptible to things. Not me. I don't have to do what Jesus says or believe what he says and do it my own way. I ain't going to fall under. Uh-uh. And I think Peter, you know, he made a pretty good effort, you know, because later that evening he seemed to be holding his ground and his stalwart resolve to stand strong with Jesus is shown because in the 18th chapter of John, it records that during Jesus' arrest, Peter brandished his sword and lopped the ear off of somebody. Malchus is here if you read. Oh, man, Jesus was wrong. Looks like he was wrong there, right? Peter's just like that waitress standing in the middle of the room. Nobody even considered going through a plate glass window. She's too far away from that. Ain't no way Peter's going to fall. He's standing right there next to Jesus with a sword drawn. There wasn't even a glimmer of him giving up or falling. And yet by the end of the night, his stumble happened. And Peter's fall was nothing less than spectacular. It was an epic fail moment. And Peter denied Jesus not once, not twice, but three times. Now, I am thankful the story doesn't end there. Jesus went out of his way to restore not only the severed relationship between Peter and himself, but he also... And I want you to hear, listen to me here. Restored Peter's purpose. God doesn't, doesn't just restore people. But if you let him, he'll restore your purpose. Amen. He'll restore your purpose. I, I think we need to be honest. You can get sideways and go the wrong way for a little while. But the sad thing is some of us are so arrogant that we made a, 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 a wrong turn so far back, we're afraid everybody's going to watch us make the turn around and get back, so we just continue to keep making the same one. I ain't about to humble myself or submit myself. Right? I've, I've, I've come too far to lower myself. 
from God. So I said, I, I can't. I'm not changing my word for you. God salvaged Peter and salvaged his purpose. And on the inaugural day of the church age, Peter was the keynote speaker. He delivered the most important message regarding salvation in the entire Bible in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Peter, the sword sling and denier. <laughs> in fact, later people had such high regard for Peter's ministry. Oh, I, I, I need someone to hear me. Don't let people, I'm going to say this. I'm, young people, if your mom and dad skirt the issues when they're at home, don't you do it. Hear me. Hear me. Don't, 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 look. If they're going to leave you some money, take it. Run with it. If they're going to leave you a car, take it, run with it. But don't follow their mistakes. Don't follow those issues. Don't follow. <laughs> Listen, if daddy was a drug addict, you'd be the farthest thing from it. No, no, no. You don't have to follow. You don't have to be a tip off the old block. You can be a born again and be like Jesus. You don't got to follow that mess. And mom and dad say, well, that's just pastor saying that. And that's just the Bible, but mom and dad, you know what? Love your mom and dad, but I'm telling you what, you better live for God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They had such a high regard for Peter's turnaround and who Peter became that they would literally lay the sick on the streets where when he would pass by, his shadow would heal them. Acts chapter 5, verse 15. Insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow them. We've all careened and crashed through the proverbial plate glass window. We've all crashed and burned. You hearing me? We've all attempted to do great things and said, well, that's that didn't quite turn out like I expect. Can I get an amen? Can I get an honest amen from someone like, you know what? Hey, let me get you all off the hook. If it's all in him, it don't have to be all about you. If it's all in him, hey, I can make a mistake and recover. See, the, the problem some people have is you're so busy walking around trying to be somebody, you don't get to be anybody. Romans 3 and 23 says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've all got epic fails. Let's be honest. Can we be honest? I think one of the greatest things you can do as a parent is look at a child and say, yeah, I messed that up. I didn't do that right. I need to get that right. You, you, want, you want to set your children at liberty to live for God? Be honest and say, you know, I ain't done it all right. You know, all those times we had preacher for lunch, I was wrong. All the time we sat around the table and criticized brothers and sisters, I was wrong. That, that time I came home from work and all I did was chew up on my, my co-worker, I was wrong. That time I, we, 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 we missed church out over a lie, I was wrong. Free your children to live for God. Free your children to live for God. And you're going to find out and free your children to live for God, you really set yourself free to get your purpose back. You may not get the time back, but I'd sure rather get my purpose back anyway. I don't think there's anybody in here that has some redos in their life. I got a few things I'd like to redo. <laughs> Carlos Honesty shows again. <laughs> the, big, the big truth that I want you to get is even our worst mistakes can be redeemed if we're given to the Redeemer. Jesus placed Peter right back on the path of his calling. He, 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 Jesus didn't allow Peter to be defined by his worst decision. Oh, I don't know. I, I don't know who this is for. Maybe none of y'all got that one, but my God, Jesus did not allow Peter to be defined by his worst decision. 
In fact, he went so far as to go to Calvary to remit Peter's sins and restore his soul, his person and his purpose. Because he still calls the things that are not as though they were. He did this for all of us. Yep. There are going to be some people that will memorialize your failure. They'll build statues, and every time you turn around at home or at church, they'll bring it right up and go, see? There'll be those that'll never let you forget when your life was broken or you fell, and they'll, they'll point to the broken glass. They'll, break, they'll, they'll, they'll point to the scars and the blood, but God is more for you instead of shame. God will restore you and redeem you and, 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 and put you back together again. God can and will if you allow him to do it. If you'll be honest and get, get sincere in your heart and mind, God can give you a life of double honor if you'll get to that place. God, I haven't done it all right all the time. Quit holding on mistakes because your pride didn't want to relinquish it. Most of you know and or where are my knee issues? <laughs> I have decided that my legs like it better when I'm standing than laying down. Um, in fact, if you spend any time with me sitting down, I got to take a couple of seconds of standing up just to move them around and get my legs under me. I took my first ride on the old uh, exercise bike yesterday. I'm here. The ride wasn't impressive by anyone's standard. But it was monumental for me. Sister Carol, I had to get on there again. I had to try again. Even though it had been some time since I had ridden it. And I'll just tell you right now, moving pavers and rock and wheelbarrows and shovels is not a replacement for real exercise. You know, there's something about our bodies. It will only put out just enough effort to get done what you're doing. <laughs> it, you can't use more strength than you need to lift something. Just think about that for a little bit. Some of you that will dawn on you. And so I realized that just like that tennis shoe moniker, I just needed to do it. I just needed to get on there and do it. Now, I, I know I'm using something physical, but I, I'm talking about something spiritual. At some point, you just have to decide you're going to do it. You just got to get the sick and tired of the aches and pains and the old familiar flesh and say, you know what? Greater is he that is in me now. I'm tired of being held up uh, by this addiction, by, by this habit, by this hobby, by this moniker, by what, why, why do people always associate me with that instead of with God and with church and with Jesus Christ? Uh, Micah 7 and 8 declares, do not rejoice over me, my enemy, when I fall. I will arise. I, I'm trying to find those that want to rise up again, that you're not satisfied with your history, and you want a better destiny. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. I believe the prophet Micah knew something about being a follower of God. We will not always be perfect. I said that nicely. We will make mistakes. We will incur damage from falling. We will all have life-altering moments that might knock us off our rhythm and knock us down. It might be sickness. It might be trouble. It might be a problem. It might be a dumb decision. It might be the fact that you just stopped taking God serious and you found that status quo and you thought you wanted to part there and you've watched people step to another level and you get kind of passed by. Hold on a minute. Let me help you with something here. Some of you get real jealous and that's why you've done so well in worldly things. You ain't about to let the Joneses get out ahead of you. But Paul himself said, covet 
the best. I, I remember as a young man being a youth pastor of a church, blowing, going. I, my picture was in the, in the church directory. There I was, looking fly, debonair, and good looking. I had all my hair. My chest was where it should be. My stomach was how it should be. I was wearing my black suit and had a nice toppy looking charm. But I found that that having my picture, having my title, never made me anointed. Didn't make me a good youth leader. In fact, one time, a young man by the name of Ron Ziegenbein, a pastor's in Northern America somewhere. I walked into the church and I could hear someone in the prayer room before me. It's a sad day. When we're more worried about keeping up with the Joneses and we're letting people blow by us to get to Jesus. Oh, I got under my skin. T, I said, what? That you? Uh-uh. Oh, no, I don't let that. No, that ain't happening next week. I got there earlier. He had to walk in and hear me praying them walls down. I know, I, I know, I know some of you are like, that's pride. It wasn't pride that makes you buy all that junk. It ain't pride that makes you talk about how big and bad you are when you walk into your classroom or on your job. And Yeah, I'm the one. Oh, I tell you what, pride lasts about five seconds when you get in the presence of God. But thank God it got me into the presence of God. Because sadly, some of you are glad your pride got you in the presence of hell. And a habit and a hobby that's been keeping you from ever doing for God. The purpose that he really had for you. Well, so there's something about us going, wait a minute. You know what? I'll be honest with you. I, I'm not satisfied with where I'm at. Well, Brother Corey, I guess it's just me and you tonight. Everybody, are you satisfied with you while you sit there? I'm just going to preach your Brother Corey. You know, we got to have a comeback, a get up, a rise back up in our spirit. So this, you know what? I will. I uh, I got this far, but I'm gonna try again, and go a little further this time. I'm gonna get back up and go a little farther this next time. I, I may get knocked down, but I'm gonna get back on that horse. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna start again, again. Oh no, no! I'm gonna start again, again. We live in a world that's engulfed with problems and COVID and division and, and political problems. But I'm telling you what, we got a greater mandate to be a greater church, a brighter church, a better church. And I'm not talking about the building. I'm talking about saint to God saying, you know what? Let the world get knocked down. Let the world struggle. With I'm talking about people. I'm going to rise up like I never have before. No, 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 no. My standard ride for warm up was five miles. I didn't get that done yesterday. I got three done. Likewise, it's not likely you're going to start up your renewed walk with God tomorrow with reading copious amounts of His Word. Or even spending hours in prayer. Or fasting days on end. Sometimes it's that three, mile, that three mile ride that gets those joints moving again. Like that five minute conversation with Jesus will turn into a ten minute and then a twenty minute and and that dusting off that old Bible study chart gets you teaching Bible studies again and get you witness. And you start to realize, wait a minute, as you get to that next mile, that next milestone, hey, I can do this again. I can read. I can really be what God's called me to be again. I, I don't have to be bitter and stagnant and stuck and 
in my own way. I can stir up that gift that was placed within me and be somebody that's a bright shining light in a world that's on the precipice of hell. I'm talking about young people and old people and in between people and anybody that wants to rise up again. You can. You can do this. Turn to your neighbor and say, you can do this. Let me explain something to you. Not everybody can relate to your mountain. But everyone can relate to your valley. Fighting arrogance makes us talk about our achievements. We don't post our failures on Facebook. I didn't post my uh, mileage off my bike yesterday. But if you go back a few years, you'll see where I could post 15 miles. And that's when I did bike, run, and elliptical. I could smoke 15 miles to start my workout. But I didn't post that little three-mile sissified workout. <laughs> Come on, let's call it what it is. If, you don't, if you're not doing better than you've done before, I'm going to put it in my... I, 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 I'm hard on myself. Come on. Come on, boy. Come on, pastor. You can do better than that. I, 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 I'm hard on myself. My wife deserves better than my effort yesterday. My church deserves better effort. It's a sad day when we want to be leaders and we lead more in excusing ourselves out of being leaders than being leaders. Boy, if you're going to be the cream of the crop, you ought to be on top somewhere. And not an excuse making. You know, Thomas Edison was told by his teacher he's too stupid to learn anything. Walt Disney was told he lacked imagination and didn't have any good ideas. Albert Einstein was thought to be mentally handicapped. And Vincent Van Gogh only sold one painting during his lifetime. That may sound depressing to you. But the point is that these people, and many, many others like them, never gave up. They have, made, have faced discouragement, but they didn't quit. They, 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 they have had, had, had to face maybe even failures, but they, 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 they persisted and persevered. There, something about them that when even others were telling them, you're not able, you can't, you shouldn't, you're not worthy, you're, you're not good enough, you're too stupid. You're, what? They said, wait a minute, I'm not going to allow that to define. I'm going to rise up uh, from this uh, for a just man falling seven times, but he gets back up. What am I saying? Don't show your mountain. Show your mountain of determination. Show a spectator something worth seeing. Show the doubter a reason to believe. Show someone that needs Christ that Christ can work. Don't be afraid to share your testimony of the honesty of your valley. Your hurt can help others just as deeply as your healing. Brother Lawrence, 
I'm a walk and talk and breathe and reason for you to succeed and to survive. You can talk about dialysis. You can talk about weight loss. You can talk about all them problems. You know what I can tell you? I sing that valley. I walk that valley. I'll look at it all day long with you. But there's something, a mountain on the other side of your valley, if you'll get the mindset that you're going to be determined to walk out of there. The only reason you ain't singing is because you don't want to sing. Time to shake your heart. I passed to the church through that. It's not an indictment. It's an invitation. That's people around here to tell you, hey, you can do that and still live for God. You can take on that calamity and still rise up. You can have problems and keep your purpose. Rise up. Rise up. Get up. We got a world out there. We got children out there. We got drug addicts out there. We got lost people out there that needs a church. Wait a minute. We know them problems. Rise up. Be transparent. Be vulnerable. Be honest with yourself. It wasn't easy. You see, you get up every morning, I don't care what you've done, you're going to throw up. You're going to throw up. So I would get up hours before and walk around to get that over with so that I didn't miss. Well, holy smokes, they kind of counted on me to show up and preach. Lead songs. Because if you'll face that calamity, face that fall, face that trial, and be determined to get up, your, st- your story will encourage someone else. Let me show you something. Acts 14 says, I want you to listen to this. And some Jews came from Antioch and Iconium and won the crowd over. They stoned Paul, dragged him outside the city thinking he was dead. But after the disciples had gathered around him, He got up and went back into the city. It doesn't say they helped him up. But I believe he helped them up and he was the one that was down. They saw some determination. They saw someone rising up again. They saw someone that wouldn't quit. Let me tell you something. Living for God is not a fire escape from trouble. Mm -mm -mm. but it lights the fires to make it very visible to show you that we have an ever-present help in trouble. Rise up, rise up. Paul told them, get up, let's go again. Get up, let's go again. Rise up, there's a harvest field. There's a reason to this Christian. There's a reason for church. There's a reason I read my Bible. There's a reason I got a prayer life. There's a reason I preach like this. There's a reason I clap and shout and sing. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. Let's all stand. I'm going to read Micah 7 and 8 from the uh, NIV to you tonight. Because the King James says, Rejoice not against me, O my enemy, when I fall. I will arise. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light unto me. (laughs) The NIV says, don't gloat over me, my enemy. Don't gloat. (laughs) Now, I, I remember hearing that word for the first time as a kid. 
I'd never looked that word up till tonight. Anybody ever heard the word term scoreboard said to you before? Right when they take you to the take you to the backboard and put it in right on over you? Took you the hole and just dunked on you or beat you at this or beat you at that. Scoreboard. It's all about scoreboard. It's a term for that as well. It's the same as gloat. It means to crow. <laughs> to exalt, rejoice, relish, celebrate. Look, I know we've said it before. But he's literally saying, rejoice not against me, Almighty. Hey, devil, we read the back of the book. We win. Why would I question what I was going to go all in on? Why, why would I lay any treasure on this world and not in heaven? Why? Why? It's time to get up. It's time to get excited and realize, wait a minute. It's not, is there church tonight? Oh, I get to go to church. You don't understand. We win. The church wins. We win the ch I, I don't, man, some of us, I, 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 the enemy snuck in. He, he, well, we got a good devil. <laughs> Makes us feel sorry for how that church is a burden. Oh my God, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. What? You don't wanna score the winning goal? You don't wanna run in the, the winning touchdown? You don't. I was flipping through some stuff today and I found out that all oh, about 20 so 20 something years ago or so they started a new football or soccer cup back in England. Cala Cala Abra or whatever it's called, cup. And for the last four years. The city of Manchester has won and got their name written four times in a row on the cup. Well, they were in the quarterfinals today against my old team. And I was like, what? What's this? And it was in the last two or three minutes of it. I'm like, oh, it was zero, zero in the last three minutes. Now, I know most of you probably don't know Premier League soccer rules, so you're about to learn some. So I got captivated. And here they are. Here's the Hammers, West Ham United. That was my soccer team. That was my foot, foot team. Foot, you say foot over like that. A little bit of European accent. British, like water. A bit of crumpet, spot of tea. game ended 0-0 so they had to go to penalties and that means five players from each team have to go forward and line up at a certain distance to kick a, a penalty which I guess statistically and I, I haven't looked it up so this is a guess it's it's a 90% chance that you're going to score because the, the, they're so close and they kick so well and, and I remember taking penalties when I played and all that kind of stuff so anyway the, the goalkeeper has to decide and guess which way he's going to go. So he just dive. So each team had to line up. The West Ham guy gets up there. And I don't know their names anymore because I don't follow it anymore. But it's just, it was the jerseys, the team. Still my team. I didn't know the, the players, but I knew the team. It didn't matter who the player was. It mattered the jersey that he wore. And our player gets up there and he knocks it right in. And here comes Manchester with their shot. And the very first off, they missed. I was like, oh. 
Wow. That doesn't happen. So now, one by one, they had to go, and you just, the, the, the tension got. If you've played, you guys probably think, what's he talking about? But anyway, I was like, oh. And so finally, the fifth West Ham guy got up there to take his shot. And I bet all five they made, they won. I didn't know any of the players. But I knew the team. Listen, it, it just, you know who you are. Win one for the team. It's all, you have to get, get on get on God's side. Get on. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. If I win, I win one for the team. If I if I if I give my best, I the whole team wins. They don't know me from Adam. They don't even know some joker over in America that should have been preparing for a message was even watching five minutes of soccer. They don't, none of that matters. The point is, my team won. When you get up, our team wins. When you, when you go like you've never gone before, our team wins. You can fall, you can struggle, you can have trouble and problems. But if you'll get up again, we can all say, don't you gloat over us, enemy. We win. We win. I, I wonder right now if we just lift up our hands and thank God. We win. I'm going to do better than I've ever done before. I'm going to rise up again like never before. I'm going to rise up and live for God like never before because I know our team wins.